Good morning, babies, and welcome to Simply Stacy, where the joy of the Lord is our strength. Well, this morning, I want to talk to my singles. I didn't get to do it Friday, and it was in my spirit, but I'm going to do it today. To my singles, I know this season, everybody's caught up in the season. I know some people feel lonely and by themselves and wish they had a companion and just want somebody to give a gift to or somebody to give them a gift. But I want to tell you, babies, be still and know that he's God. Be anxious for nothing. There's so many people out here in relationships that are going through. I mean, going through every day. And being single has its perks as well as its lows. It's got its highs and its lows. But I'm going to tell you the good out way to bad, even with being single. Even with being single, allow God to work on you, prepare you, get you ready for your season of being in a relationship. Because so many people out here that went out here and put their hands in it and did it themselves, and it has not turned out well for them. You want peace. You want joy. You want somebody that you can enjoy life with and enjoy God with. You don't want somebody just to say you got somebody. As my mother always say, you don't want breath and britches in your house. You don't want that. You know, a lot of people, they're not even ready to be a companion. So, babies, I just see, even on my timeline, you know, a lot of the single people, I see that part where that sadness is there and that desperation is coming out because you'll see a lot of people say, I'm ready to get married or where's my companion? That's that desperation coming out in the single folks because they're not being still. Their spirit ain't quieted. They're not just truly waiting on God. And in this season, atmosphere, and this climate that's out here in the world today, you should be willing to wait on God. You know, some of you ain't been hurt enough. I had this conversation with my mother. You've been through all manners of things when it comes to your heart. You've went through all kinds of things. The Bible said, guard your heart. I'm writing a book on guarding your heart. Because I see that in our society right now that so many people don't guard their heart. Especially women. You open your heart up too quick. You don't even know the people. You don't been hurt by Joe, Fred, John, Bob, all these different people you've been hurt. But you must ain't had enough. Because you're so quick to ready to jump into another relationship out of desperation. That pain that you had from that previous relationship wasn't enough to make you put on the brakes. No, so many people are just steady trucking on forward. It's an old demonic saying that people say in the world, and I heard them saying in the church too. They get over somebody, they get underneath for somebody. That's what a lot of people do. They get over another, and they really ain't getting over them people. You just going out there having sex with somebody else to meet your little lustful, horny needs, but you're not over that other person. And that person that you get underneath of the next time, they don't have your whole heart. They don't have all of you. You don't even have all of you because part of you is still back there with that other person. So, baby, just who all the pain. Do you want to keep crying and can't stop crying? That wasn't enough for you. Some of you don't been beat and abused by men and women that abused their men. You know, you just you don't been through all manners of things. You don't had sleepless nights from crying all the time. You don't had nights where all you're doing is thinking about that joker because he's all up in your spirit. You feel like you can't live alone and be by yourself without this person. Do you want to feel that again? Do you want to get in a relationship and build it and build it and build it just for it to be torn down, then left to naught, left in the ruins? You don't want that. So you want to make sure that you are prepared and that the person you get with is prepared so that both of you will come together and you're willing to build. That they're just not going to leave you and leave you hanging with a broken heart. Tearful nights. Dreaming and wishing they was there. Y'all know what you go through when you leave them. Your mind just tossed to and fro. Now you got social media. You're stalking them on the Facebook. You're stalking them on Twitter. Stalking them. Because what? Your heart was broken. You just want to see their picture. You might got the voice on your voice, man. You just want to keep hearing that because you're just used to them. You can't never get over it. Do you want to continue to go through that relationship after relationship after relationship after relationship? Babies, pump the brakes. Be still and know that he's God. Get the tools needed for a good relationship. Get the tools needed for you to be a good, capable, wholesome person to be in a relationship. 
that a relationship ain't going to be no better than the two people that come into it. Ain't going to be no better than the two people that enter into that relationship. If you both are half broken, the relationship going to be half broken. But if you're whole, the relationship will be whole. Because you'll be whole and mature enough to be able to do what you need to do to be in a relationship. Most people are not. That's why the relationships keep being broken. Because you're broken. And you're not willing to work on yourself. So a lot of us done been married before. You done got divorced or whatever. Or your mate done died or whatever. You got a second chance to do it right. Third chance or whatever. You got a chance to do it right. And doing it right begins with you. Making the right choices for yourself. To be a whole person. You have to do the self-care on yourself. And when you meet that other person that done done the self-care and done the work, you're going to recognize it because what? You done done it within yourself. So a whole person know another whole person. Yes. And brokenness won't be attractive to you anymore. Because some of you are attracted to brokenness. Why? Because there's still some brokenness in you. But when you become whole, mm -mm, brokenness is not attractive at all. Mm -mm, at all. You don't want nobody broken in your life because it is not going to be fun. It ain't going to be no picnic. It ain't going to be no holiday. Ain't going to be no joy. You may have some highs and lows and highs and lows and highs and lows. But you want somebody mature to have that even kill. And not that you won't have problems, but you'll know how to problem solve. You'll know how to communicate with you. Because most people that are broken, they don't even know how to communicate. They won't even understand you. Because they're so caught up in their brokenness, all they can hear is what they want. See, brokenness makes people selfish. They're not even concerned about how you feel. They're not even concerned about how their behavior is making you feel. They don't care how their behavior is setting a tone for your relationship. They don't even care. All they worry about is what it's doing to them and what they're not getting and how their needs ain't met. That's all they're worried about. Selfish people don't care. And broken people are selfish by nature. Just watch them. Watch broken people. And not that they can't be healed. But they got to realize that they're broken, that they need a healing. Some of you that's going to listen to this video, God is working on you. You need a healing. You think it's going to come from getting somebody in your life, but it comes from God. And you doing the work. You walking in forgiveness. You walking in love. You walking in joy. You walking in peace. All this stuff is going to come from within you, from your Savior. And then when you get in a relationship, you'll take it to the relationship. But if you got all this strife in you, unforgiveness, all this anger, you're going to take that into the relationship. And believe me, it is going to play out. And if both of you got it, and nine times out of ten, both of you going to have some dysfunction. That's why you don't drew to each other. It's going to play out in a relationship. And a relationship ain't going to last that long. And if it do last, you both just going to sit up there being miserable. Just like say some people are like, oh, they've been together all them years. That's all they got is all them years. But all them years, they've been in the house battling, going through stress. Don't even look at each other, can't stand each other. Wouldn't even want to be friends with each other. Nobody want no relationship like that. So if you want a good, wholesome, godly relationship, get the tools needed for you to be whole. So then you will recognize wholeness in another person. If you want a good relationship, be still and know that he's God. Allow God to bring you together with that godly companion that is whole. Not you out here chasing. That's male or female. Male or female. I know most churches teach that, you know, the man's for the man that finds a wife and all this stuff. That's a whole nother topic for another day. But just be still. Just be still and know that he's God. And get the tools needed to be a godly wife, to be a godly husband. Get the tools needed to do the self-care on yourself. Some of you need to first do a self-evaluation of yourself. 
you know, been through several relationships and wonder what, well, Lord, and all, some people always want to blame it on the other person. But like they say, you the common denominator in all these relationships. What part did you pay? Even if it's just the fact that your choices in these people is off. And why are you choosing these type of people that comes to the same destructive relationship? That's a good part to start right there. Why are you choosing them? Look within. There's something that you're lacking in to make the proper decisions. You're missing some tools. So you need to get the tools to make a better decision. So you don't keep making the same dysfunctional decision and get the same type of dysfunctional relationships. They might play out a little different. It might be a different person, but it's the same thing. Babies, I love you and so does God. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day, wonderful week. Smooth to sugar, workers. Love you.